Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY. Today we got a service call for a water source heat pump. Thank you to everyone tuning into Jumper Man Tech. Got the system and cooling right now. One thing I notice is that I can hear the indoor fan running. It doesn't sound like the compressor is running. So let's go ahead and see what's going on. Take off this panel. If I could do that. <laughs> Before anything, first thing I notice is there a red LED blinking. You can see a little clearer now. On the side here, there's a fault indicator list. So the red light on stands for load shed. Load shed? I have no idea what that is, but I have worked on similar units in this building where the red light stood for high pressure. I could tell this is an updated board, so this definitely was replaced. You can see the contactors pitted, that should definitely be replaced. Let's get some gauges on here and reset the unit and see what's going on. Alright, so I have my wireless probes on. For small systems like this, you don't want to just put your gauges with the hoses on it because you're going to lose the refrigerant in the system. Whatever fits in the hose, you're going to lose. So like this, you pretty much don't lose any refrigerant. We have a standing pressure of 121 PSIG. And I think this went off on high pressure. Let's go ahead and kill the power, reset it, and see what happens. Here's the pull switch. Let's put it back on. Okay. We have a steady green light now. Oh, compressor started. Let's watch the high side. 208, 213. Wonder if there's a water regulating valve here, no. All right, the head pressure is climbing right now. So 50, listen to it getting louder and louder. Let me see what's the temperature of this water. See the head pressure is getting high, 290. So that was definitely high head. Water temperature is at 70 degrees inlet. The inlet pipe is the one with the strainer. It's got a 300 head, so we have a high pressure issue here. 305. Let's shut this down before it cuts off. It's just constantly getting higher so I'm suspecting that strainer right now all right so to pull the strainer I'm gonna close the supply and return and drain the remaining water I do not have a bucket I got one of these so this little valve on here oh wow heavy dirt came out of there The water's green because that's the antifreeze in the system. Opening up this, remove some air on the line. Let's drain that because if we didn't drain it when we popped this off, we would have got splashed in the face. The strainer's definitely dirty because as soon as I opened that, I saw black chunks coming out. So from here, we're safe to pull this off. The 
adjustable they're sliding right off so i'm gonna use this milwaukee torque lock i hope oh yep came right off let's see what's going on with this i'm sure this is dirty packed 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 mm-hmm Strainer is nice and clean now. Have a rubber gasket here. Simply just gonna screw this back on. Tighten it down. All right, so I tightened it down. Let's close this little valve here. And we can open up the supply and return. Make sure we have no leaks. All right, everything looks cool. Got the power off. And from here, I wanna replace this contact there and I'll take a picture. Hopefully we can get a picture of the contact so you can see how pitted it is. Here I have a brand new contact there. Two pole, 208 to 240 volt coil. Got the power off and we could simply remove one wire and install the new wire. So just go one for one so you don't gotta you know, write anything down and we should be good from there. We know that it started. So some nice fresh clean contacts would do quite some justice. If you wanna see a video on how to troubleshoot one, you're gonna see a pop up any moment and I will leave a link in this video's description. Before I pull this contactor, I just wanna get some of the wiring on so it's out of our way. We won't have any issue. All right, so these two white wires, the coil. Just wanna be able to mount a new one and then take it from there. Hi. Let's take things one step at a time. You can't go wrong. Oh, you see this one, one wire goes to the coil and it takes 120 from one pole. So let's get that one off too. Now from there, I should be able to take off the contact there and just, you know, go one by one. Okay. Still a bit tight, but that's just because of these two wires here. It's tie wrapped on the opposite end. And just pull that a little so we can keep the tie wrap. Now I can mount my new contact there. Now that is a beautiful thing. All right, brand new contact there, clean strainer. Turn the gauges back on. Let's go ahead and bump this thing and see what happens. I'm gonna put the pull switch back on. All right. Fan is on, but that's because it has, it's on the on setting at the thermostat. Let's go ahead and put the thermostat on cooling. We're in the summertime right now. running got a 58 pound back 189 pound head this is refrigerant 22 let's give it five to ten minutes to balance out but this is a good thing pressure is much lower than before we had went past 300 pounds on the high side so let's give it some time take a temperature reading monitor it well, we're looking good from here. All right, everything's going well. Got a 55 pound back, 185 pound head. Not over 300 anymore in climbing. Everything looks pretty good. New contactor, it's definitely a fairly new control board. Strainer is clean. We got a good supply temperature. Doing pretty well. Just gonna keep an eye on it. Oh, look at that. I don't 
don't know if you can see it, but that suction line is sweating. That's how you know we got good temperatures. Pretty much we're gonna wrap it up from here. And if anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe. I'll catch you all next time.